Hello everyone, welcome back to Monday's video here on this beautiful winter's day or autumn's day, whatever it is. So guys, before we get into what we've got going on in the workshop here, um, I don't know what you've been doing the weekend, whether you've had a great weekend. Um, Saturday was lovely weather here and I managed to get the Lambo out. Now I know this is a second channel subject. Um, if you haven't already, guys, head over to our second channel, Lee at Bearham, subscribe there, like, um, and you can see more on the Lambo, etc., and the kit car and what have you. Been out in that car, and I'm gonna be honest, guys, Ricky at RE Performance, Dave at Larini Exhaust have produced me the car that I've always wanted. Um, so when I said to you he was going to be mapping it for some pops and bangs, doesn't necessarily get the pops and bangs, which is a great thing, but you do get the rumble. You know that sound when you fire up the blowtorch, the <laughs> that's what you get. It sounds like a proper Lambo. Um, still nice and quiet-ish on idle, which is a great thing. Um, the more you rev it, the louder it goes, but you get that raspy noise, that proper Lambo distinctive noisy enough noise, do you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, Larini exhaust guys, they supplied me with the Inconel GT2 system, which is I think one of their noisiest. Ricky, at the minute I haven't got the active valve on it, but Ricky's put the valves open um, and I just absolutely love it. I couldn't stay out of it to be honest with you. Um, so yeah, head down to the um, description below guys, see the links there to Larini and to RE Performance. Um, have a little look at their YouTube channels can't recommend Ricky enough, I really can't. And Dave, big help to me from Larini Exhaust. Anyway, before we go any further, guys, do you remember a few weeks ago, I said that John, who works with me here, he's got a little Austin 7 Special, and he blew it up. Well, he's been in the process of doing the engine, and here it is. So, you can see, guys, tiny little thing, 750cc, um, you've got the the barrels here, which are all been done. He's bored those out. I think they're at plus 40 now, actually. Um, he's gone for an uprated Newman cam on this. You can see the rods. Look how diddy those rods are in comparison to my hands. Um, so they have been off to John Kirkby to be white metalled. Um, so re he's redone those. John's ground the crank. Absolutely lovely. And you can see that is in there and turns, turns a beaut, guys. Um, so he is in the process. He's been coming in at the weekends to get this one done. Um, so we'll head over there when he's built it and um, watch him put it in the vehicle. But yeah, lovely little motor that. Be honest, absolute bloody death trap, but um, as long as he enjoys it. Right, secondly, the normally aspirated Cosworth for Pete here. This is the one that we had to send off to be line board. Um, it's come back. I've given it a thorough clean, guys. Give it another lick of paint and got the crank in today. I've plastic aged it. Absolutely perfect. Talked it all up and the thing turns a treat. Look at that. Couldn't ask for better than that. Um, so next step on this one, obviously we're gonna have to put the pistons on the rods, do a bit of a dummy build, put the head on, dummy the head on, check our valve to piston clearance, because these are a normally aspirated piston. They're not the ones we're normally familiar with. Um, so we've got to make sure all that's right, obviously because there's been some took off the block and the head. Um, but this one we can crack on with now. That is absolutely great news. Secondly, this V8 over here, been bored, been faced. Pistons and rods are here. John has successfully managed to get the pistons off without damaging any of them because these are not a circlip type, they're a pressed on type. So he's managed to get those off. And the reason he's had to get those off, guys, is because he's, the customer sent a dummy here um, with these cutouts in, and I've got to put all those cutouts in these ones here. Um, so that's my next job on this. Then John can get those on the back on the rods and, um, and all done. So I've just finished my third bore, rebore in this, um, the one that the Cosworth that I put liners in last week. So I should get this one honed out today and, and faced. And then all it is is just a, a dummy build, make sure everything's good um, and the customer can take that away because I think he's building it. So that's another Cosworth done, guys. Right then guys, what am I doing here on the lathe? So we've got one of the Acrolyte pistons out of the normally, normally aspirated Cosworth. I am doing one of three things that I need to do on this to make sure that these pistons are correct in the engine. So first thing I'm doing on here is getting the overall um, compression ratio correct. So these are a 
I suppose they're a fully finished piston, but you nearly always have to sort of modify them when you do your dummy build. I'm taking 25,000 off the crown of these, um, and with my calculations, that's going to leave us with probably about 11.6 to 1, something like that, with the cylinder head volume we've got. So these pistons with a four-wheel drive head are about 12.5 to 1 normally, depending on what gasket you're using. The gasket we're using is going to be, it's a Victor Ryan, so it's going to end up squished about a mil, and so slightly less than normal. So you've got the valve cutouts, you've got the area at the side here. So on the turbo pistons, it's all the way around this. So you need to machine that all the way around to get your, um, your squish height. We did a dummy build and these were about 18 thou proud of the block. We wanted them about um, 12. So we've took down, took down six thou here. I've took down 25 thou off this face here, which is in theory, with the gasket, it's going to end up about that 11.6 or something like that, which is um, which is what we want. So they're the, the first two things, guys. Um, obviously, your running clearance is another, but the next thing we are going to be doing is putting this down the bore. I'm going to be putting the head on without the head gasket, and I'm going to be checking the valve to piston clearance. Usually, the last one I did of these, you get a shed load. You don't. It's it's not that fine with these. Um, these are all belt and braces cut out so we'll just put that in there and check that and, um, and get back to you. So there we go we've got our piston set up um, so you've, what you've got to do is you've got to get that line inside here in line with the, with the, the bed um, so that's all clocked up um, and you basically we're just going to run that milling cutter over that side and over that sized six thou. Um, so what I do is I've set the the height on zero. You can see there we're about half a mil higher from the cutter to the piston there and what we want to do is get our, our machine that way right up against to that line. You can see that now. So then what we do, we just move the cutter away from there, undo our stop, pull down the, pull down the head and just put our little stop on there and then we know that that is zero. So we then lift this off the zero, move the machine over that way. Okay, start our cutter and we put our six thou cut on. So that's six thou over the zero and then we put the feed over. And you'll see that now start to remove six thou just off the outer edge giving you our perfect 12 thou squish and then we just wrap it round and we do the same on the other side so there is a piston in the bore guys that so that is uh, crank on TDC number one piston and rod I haven't got any circlips in or rings or anything like that at the moment it's just literally on TDC pushed down there so we've got 12 thou protrusion on the edge here like I said on the turbo pistons, you have a, a, a bowl inside here, um, and this squish area is all the way around. But with this, you've got a nice, um, you've got a sort of nice edge here, and then that obviously fills the combustion chamber up of the head. That is the design of it. It sort of goes into there, and um, obviously brings the compression ratio up. So we've made sure that this is the correct height. We've got one more to do, which is that one, which I'll show you in a minute what, how I do that on the mill. We took our 25 thou off the top of here because we had 16 thou off the head face. So that in theory will, we're taking that down. We've had to take the valve cutouts out a little bit um, just to give it a little bit of clearance on the diameter. So the next thing we've got to do is we're going to put this head on without the head gasket. We've got an inlet and an exhaust valve there with the valve stem seal on so it can't fall through, but no um, springs. So what we're going to do is put a little bit of um, plasticine on the edge of here and we're going to push those valves down and see what the indent looks like and uh, see, see what our clearance is like from the edge first of all um, and then we're going to remove that and see what the overall height is or it comes down and see what the clearance actually is at TDC with the piston. Right guys so we fitted the cylinder head without the head gasket and worked out our uh, valve clearance I'll go in the office in a minute and show you exactly what we've found um, and the measurements we should be looking for so what we do is we put this head on without the gasket um, 
we've got two valves here, an inlet and exhaust on the very end, um, with which we've took the springs off, but the valve stem seals are on, so it holds the valves in. So when we put that on, we obviously, we have the piston at uh, top dead center, just below top dead center. Because we've running no gasket, we want that outside edge, which is 12 valve protrusion, flush with the head, okay? So it's not trying to push into the cylinder head here. Um, then what we do is measure the valve behind, so the stem side, zero it, then push the valves down so they hit the bottom of the pockets, and then we measure them again and see what we've got. And on this particular one, we have got uh, 5.8 mil on the inlet and 5 mil on the exhaust. So I'll show you what that means in a minute. Second thing we do then is take the head off and put some plasticine in the exhaust and inlet around the edge. Then we put the head back on and we push the valves down into the plasticine and take it off. And what that sh shows us is where the valve edge is sitting in comparison to the edge of the cutout. So you can see there, we have got on the exhaust, I'll we'll just get some focus, we've probably got about a mil and a half on the exhaust clearance and about a millimetre or so on the inlet. So that's absolutely perfect, guys. I don't tend to want to run any less than about half a mil because you've got to allow for the valve movement, obviously. So um, we're absolutely over the moon with that. It means we haven't got to modify the pockets anymore i have actually opened these diameters out myself because i find a standard even on the, uh, the the turbo pistons they tend to run a bit close so i like to just open them out um so we'll just go in the office now and i'll show you exactly what those clearances mean from the power valve to piston so guys if we go onto the newman cams website um i'll show you here these are the cams we are running so they are normally aspirated uh, a ph two camshaft, fast road cam, and the measurement they give you here is the one that's important, okay? So this is your valve lift. You've got 10.4 on the inlet ex exhaust because it's a hydraulic setup. Um, these two that go after that, so you've got the tarmac rally and then the full race cam, they are the mechanical um, non-hydraulic setup, okay? So this is a full race here where you've got 11.4 but we're running the 10.4 on a hydraulic. So it's about, it's the most you can go on the hydraulic. And you see this here, it says, uh, lift at TDC with clearance. Okay, so they give there, you see on the inlet and exhaust, they give 1.95 mil. So if we say, for instance, that's two mil, um, rule of thumb, we like to give it about 1.6 mil on both over what they recommend. So we are looking at a clearance of 3.6 mil on both. You tend to run a little bit more on the exhaust. So I like to run maybe about half mil over on the exhaust just for, to account for any expansion. So if we say, uh, even if we say another 0.4 on top of that, so that's 3.6 plus point. So four mil, we're looking at four mil clearance with the piston at TDC. Um, that's basically how much clearance you want on the valve. We are getting 5.8 on the exhaust, so we're 1.8 over, and we're getting five on the inlet. So that's five over 3.6, so we're about one and a half mil over. So what that means, guys, is, and you're probably thinking, well, why do they cut the valve so deep, the pocket so deep? Because on the full race cam here, you can see they've got 3.35. So if we say 3.4, um, even 3.4 uh, plus your 1.6 is 5. That means even on the exhaust, 5, you've got enough there. But, of course, we're running that. That clearance there is done without the head gasket. We've got about another millimetre on top of that to go with the head gasket. So it means that the, the cutouts in those pistons are more than adequate to run any one of these cams guys full race or not so we're well within the margins well within the safe zone um yeah let's crack on and build it well guys that's all we've got time for today i'm sorry if i dribbled on and you couldn't understand anything that i was going on about to do with those pistons in the normally aspirated cosworth today um do apologize but a bit of a technical one until Wednesday's video, have a great evening. Hope you've learned something and we'll see you then. Cheers, guys.